I told her about uh, this weekend, which is 100 days out until the election. Mm -hmm. And um, I told her that we're trying to make 100,000 calls mm -hmm. and um, we'll really have 100,000 conversations with people and mm -hmm. smart conversations. Um, and I asked her if we could have her pledge to vote no and she said yeah, so it was great. My name is Sonia and I'm volunteering because um, I have a lot of friends that are gay and lesbian and although a lot of them are fairly young and maybe not thinking about marriage right at this time, I know a few years down the road that is a place where a lot of them want to be eventually and I want them to have that opportunity uh, when they get to that point um, because I know that they are in good relationships right now and if this is something that doesn't get passed or that, that gets passed then um, they won't be able to have the opportunity that my parents have had for 24 years. I go into it knowing that the only way that we're going to win is by having these conversations and that they're really, really important to have. Um, and I know that a lot of them might be difficult and it's a really emotional issue for people because it is talking about real people and people's lives. So I go into it knowing that I need to have a connection with people, no matter where that connection is and where it's about. If you have that connection, then um, hopefully they can see where you're coming from and you can understand each other better. I think her hang-up was over the word marriage, and she believed that everyone should have the same rights from marriage, but don't call it marriage. Um, so instead of, you know, everybody gets married and that's what's legally recognized, you know, have, call it a, a union or a partnership, and it would be the same whether it was a, a man and a woman, or a woman and a woman, or a man and a man, um, and leave the, the marriage word, you know, into the more religious, you know, institutions or something. Um, she brought up when she stayed in Germany for a number of years, and um, she said in Germany you could get married in the church and it would be recognized by the church, but you still had to go down to the civil offices and um, have um, documents signed in the civil. It wasn't recognized automatically in the ceremony in the church, and um, that's what she would like to see here, something similar to that. And she was a little bit confused over the wording of the amendment, so at the end I kind of clarified that with her, and um, then she said that she would most likely vote no. So I'm Jewish and I believe that this is limiting my religious freedom because in my congregation we would marry um, gay and lesbian couples but we're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm also coming in, into it from a religious standpoint and when I talk to voters that say that they're having concerns for religious reasons, I try to connect with them about, well, you know, do you believe in treating people as you'd like to be treated? And that's something that we all have in common across all faiths. So, yeah. And then I also ask them if they know anybody that's scared or lesbian in their life, co-workers or neighbors or relatives, family. Um, and when we can have that connection, it's a lot easier to have that phone call. Yeah, so there are a lot of confused people because the wording um, is like a double negative and it's really hard to understand sometimes. So um, that's why we ask two questions. We ask them if they'd be voting yes or no, and then we ask them if they think that gay and lesbian couples should have full marriage rights, some legal relationship recognition, or no relationship recognition at all. And that's when we can find out if their yes or no matches up with how they feel about um, rights with marriage. Um, and then a lot of times there's a discrepancy between the two, so I say, oh well, you know, you said you're for full marriage rights, that means you're going to be voting no.